Good morning, good morning. It is good to see your faces here this morning. And for those that are joining us online, good morning. If you will drop us a hello, we would appreciate it so that we know that you are joining us as well. Thank you to that opening of the prelude. Is that the prelude? Yes? That was very pretty. That is one of my one of my favorite hymns. And so that was very pretty this morning. The only thing that, I have two things to tell you. One, make sure and check out your Did You Know box, even though it is uh, not the first Sunday of the month, we still change the Did You Know box. So keep on top of the Did You Knows. It is about our church insurance. So to keep our building insured, it costs a lot of dollars. The second thing is that there is a potluck after the 1045 service. I would love to see your faces at the potluck. I hear that it is going to be quite a good time. Um, I have not been downstairs. I was told not to go downstairs. And so um, I, I, I obeyed. I, I followed the rules for once. And so uh, I would love for you to join me and for uh, tacos. I almost wore taco pants today, but I decided I probably shouldn't do that. So anyways, good morning. Let us center our hearts and our minds for worship. We have a few announcements for today. Actually, quite a few. Uh, first, we have some opportunities for service here within the church. Um, the Children's Sunday School can use some more helpers and substitutes. Uh, in particular, we need a first, second, and third grade teacher uh, to help share the role part-time. Uh, everything's provided uh, in terms of materials and instruction to help you out. But if you have, uh, if you feel led to help lead our children's Sunday school, please contact Julie. Uh, we really could use a little bit more help. Uh, Paul, our choir director, would like to invite anyone who feels so led to join our chancel choir. Uh, we have a new season coming right up upon us, and he is recruiting folks uh, for choir, if you're interested in singing in the choir. Our annual code drive for September and October is coming right up. Uh, so if you have some new coats that you feel you want to donate, or some gently used ones, um, St. Vincent de Paul is uh, who we work these coats through. They give coats to anybody who needs them. Um, and then people can stay warm during the winter. It's a great, great deal. Uh, uh, September is coming right around the corner, and it is going to be a very busy month. Uh, as you all know, we have the Fall Festival coming up on the 25th. What was just dropped in the announcements is that we also have the festival feast on the 11th, a couple weeks before, after the 1045 service. Uh, hamburgers and hot dogs, uh, kind of a last big barbecue bash, it sounds like. Uh, should, be, should be good. It's in your announcements if you get them emailed out or check on the, the church website. Uh, and then right away in October, on the 2nd, is the organ dedication. Now that we have our lovely organ all fixed up, uh, we're dedicating that at the 1045 service on the 2nd of October. And we will have a, uh, reci a special recital at 3 p.m. Uh, that day uh, for, the, for the organ. And with no further ado... Uh, please stand as you're able in body or spirit for our opening prayer. And pray with me. Holy God, you alone are worthy of honor and praise. Open our eyes to see the world as you see it. Give us the wisdom to witness your presence in all people. Transform us in love. Grow us in faith. Call us to love with a full heart and to share your promises with all people. Amen. And join in our opening hymn, O God Beyond All Praising. It's in the faith we sing, see so your little black book, number 2009.
give our gifts. We do give our gifts to God, and if you uh, want to do that, there is a box in the back that you can do that. You can mail it in, or you can also donate online. And so there's a host of opportunities for donating online, and for those who are joining us can make sure that they can contribute as well as they see uh, fit. So with that in mind, let us praise God for our, pray to God for our offerings. Gracious God, we thank you for the offerings that we give you. God, we pray that you will bless them, multiply them, and let us continue to do the work here at Rockbrook. God, we pray all this in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Our prayers and concerns this morning, we have uh, people that we need to pray for that are in your bulletin. We continue to pray for Greg Fuller as he continues treatment. Uh, um, Donna and Dave Diggs, as well as their daughter Heather, she continues to do well, but she still is getting immunotherapy um, as she uh, continues with her uh, health issues. And then Wanda uh, is still at, I should know what that place is called, but now I can't remember. Um, it was in your e-blast. If you want to send her a card, just make sure that you put in there that it is from Rockbrook United Methodist Church, so that will jog her memory to remind uh, her that uh, where we are, or where she used to worship at. With that in mind, is there anybody else that we need to say a prayer for this morning? All right, let us go to our God in prayer. Holy God, you are beyond our imagining and beyond our control, and for that we are grateful. Let us pray to our God, saying, God of love, hear our prayers. God of grace, hear our prayers. For your church, for Rockbrook, for your world, and for all of those who we love. God of love. Hear our prayers. We pray for those who face disaster, those who are in war-torn countries, those who are fighting in our military, those who are experiencing natural disasters. God, keep them safe. Deliver them from evil by your mighty hand. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for those who are lost or lonely. Seek them out. Bring them to safety. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for those who suffer persecution and violence. Help them. Heal them. God, for those who respond to violence. God, keep them safe. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for those who are poor and hungry. Provide for them by your generous spirit. God of love, hear our prayers. God, we pray for the saints that have gone before us. We rejoice that they have returned to you and rejoice in the company of the saints. God of love, Hear our prayers. God of grace and compassion, according to your abundant mercy, receive all these prayers and accomplish your purpose in us. We ask through this through Jesus the Christ, who taught his children to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please rise in body or spirit for our lessons from the scripture. Our lesson for the lives of the Hebrews comes from the book of Psalms, chapter 80, or Psalm 81, verses 1 and 10. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourself never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. For the word of God in and around us. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. The Hebrew scripture from today is about the importance of community. I have two stories to tell you about the impact of community. Zach loved this show on NBC called Chuck. Chuck took place in a mall and Chuck's girlfriend worked at various places in the food court, but she was really a CIA agent. Fans got wind that the show was going to get canceled, so a fan named Wendy Farrington started a grassroots campaign to save Chuck by eating Subway sandwiches. The campaign was called Finale and Football. Subway loved it. Of course Subway loved it because it sold a lot of Subway sandwiches. And it was such a huge hit there that there was a special sponsorship with Subway and NBC that it allowed NBC to bring the show back. So a bunch of fans coming together to purchase a $5 foot long was enough for Subway and NBC to take notice. The power of community saved that show. One day, while I was serving in Kansas, I had come back from a meeting to find a group of homeless folks sitting in the front lawn in a circle. In the middle of the circle was a pizza, a pizza box, not the pizza, a pizza box. And as I approached, they asked me if I wanted a piece of pizza. Now, I noticed that the pizza, every single piece was a different kind. I said, no thanks, but it was really nice to ask me if I wanted a piece. Then I thought about it, and I said, where'd you get that pizza at? And they told me that they had gotten several out of the dumpster, and they were sharing it with everyone that they could. That was what I quickly found out about my homeless folks. That they were this family. They loved each other, not all the time, but most of the time. And they looked out for each other. If one had something, they all had a taste of it. It didn't matter if it was food, drugs, cigarettes, clothing, shampoo. They would always make sure that the group got some of what they had. It was fascinating how they had built community and how much they cared for each other. The writer of Hebrews wants us, this Christian community, to know how important it is to love each other. The command is mutual love, which the Greek word Philadelphia meant Love for one's brothers or sister by blood. Now, in the New Testament, this special, this was special, a special kind of love, because it meant between members of a church community. Christians during that time were often made fun of for the because folks thought that they were forming fake relationships. Meaning that since that they were not blood relatives, how could they possibly have
have this mutual love of brothers and sisters. But the people of the church said, well, we, we are brothers and sisters. Because we're brothers and sisters of Christ. And calling each other the brothers and sisters of Christ meant that the church community agreed that everyone was a child of God. That this practice of mutual love was needed in that time to preserve and strengthen the community of believers. This church is a community of love, and we are to continue that love. And one of, that, one of the best ways to show this mutual love is through compassion. Compassion would have set the community of believers apart during those days of the early church. Compassion is still one of the ways that we show us that sets us apart. Because one of the ways that we show compassion is by the ways that we show hospitality to the stranger. When we help others, we should do so expecting nothing in return. As the Hebrew author tells the community to never neglect or overlook this practice of hospitality because some have entertained angels without knowing it. Look what happens in the Hebrew Bible. We hear multiple times that there are messengers who come to folks. Think about Sarah and Abraham, to which they fed the three messengers bread and water. It was important to the writer of the Hebrews that folks knew that hospitality was important for those nomadic folks. Today, hospitality is just as important because how we treat others matters. People are always watching. People are always watching you when you tell them that you've gone to church or that you are a Christian. They're watching because the way that we treat others who are unknown or different or from different cultures more often than not, determines how we will treat the stranger as well. So how we conduct ourselves, it really matters. And this theme of entertaining strangers is woven throughout the Bible, yet it's hard for us to live out. We are hesitant, we're even defiant in living this out. We not only fear the stranger, but we also teach our kiddos to fear those who are different from us, from us. But the thing is, is that we are all created by God to love each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Think about Rockbrook for a minute. Think about the community that happens here. We worship on Sunday. This week, a woman's group met to study the word. Bell practice happened on Thursday, on Wednesday. There was a church council meeting on, no, bell practice happened on Wednesday. There was a church council meeting on Thursday. A therapist met clients here. There were aerobics here. There was square dancing. Yesterday, the All for One Theater group performed. This is community. We are a community center for the neighborhood. Look at what all the things that Brian announced that's going on in September and October. This is community. And verse 7 says that we are to remember the leaders who speak God's word and imitate their faith because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same yesterday, today, and forever. There is power in community. Community can change lives. Community can make 
people eat enough Subway sandwiches to make a TV show continue on. Community makes sure that all are fed a slice of pizza. May we always, may we always be brothers and sisters in Christ who seek to love others as Christ love us, as Christ loves us. May it be so. Amen. Turn with me to 2130 and we will sing the summons. 21. 